Welcome to Law Dog Corvette. Today we'll be talking about painless wiring harness. This is part five, and we are gonna hook up the relay for the fan. Now my wiring harness did not come with a dedicated fan uh, circuit, so we have to use a accessory circuit. Now painless has an accessory circuit um, dedicated, and it's right here. The wire we'll be using is in the accessory section, wire 609, accessory power, ignition. In the painless series, if you see ignition at the end of a wire name, that means power is on with the key, not power on all the time. If it's power on all the time, it'll be, it'll say bat, battery. Now this one is wire number 906, it's a 16 gauge wire. It says specifically, do not power a cooling fan with this wire directly. So you have to use a relay and that's what we did. So the first thing you have to do is reroute your wire. So in that bundle, you will find uh, the pink wire. It's wire six, uh, 906, and you have to reroute that wire to the front of the car. So you find a hole in the firewall. If you remember from one of our previous episodes, we had a hole in our firewall because we had to cut the firewall to get the fuse panel mounted and I have not covered that hole up. That hole was right there. There's this little hole. So towards the end, once we have done all our wiring, we'll, we'll come back and seal that up. But right now it makes a great pass through for these wires. And of course, that's what we had to do with wire 906. Now, 906 can't power the fan directly because it's too small. So there's where that comes in. This is a relay switch. Now there's lots of videos um, about relays and I'm gonna take some time out right now to show you how a relay works. All right, we're gonna draw a little diagram, came into the table and we're gonna, do, we're gonna diagram what's going on with our relay. So first you have the relay and I thank my kids for letting me borrow their crayons. And then <clears throat> there's the relay section. And actually, that's the pin. And so, for our purposes, 30 is always from the battery. So, we're going to draw a line here 30 from the battery. And you saw that, that I had the battery junctioning cable. This one went to bat and this one went to alternator. All right, so we go 30 hot from the battery and this wire right here would be hot. We have 86. 86 is the pink wire. And in my, um, this is wire number 906. Wire number 906 pink. That's a 16 gauge wire going into 86. Now we have 85 and this is ground but of course our ground is going to control fans so our ground is got a temperature switch to it and so it's got a little and so this is this switch, this temperature gauge is actually inside the intake manifold and that will ground. So when it hits 175, it grounds out, thus completing this circuit and then making that circuit right here close. And our final wire is 87 and 87 is blue and it goes to my dual fans that's a poorly driven, poorly drawn fan, but those are my fans. And so 906 is hot with ignition. So in 906 wire, when you turn the ignition on, this wire is powered, but of course doesn't do anything until it's grounded out. It only grounds out when the engine hits 175. This wire is hot 
from the battery. And I forgot to put one other thing here. And that is, this is, that's fused at 30 amps. Fused at 30 amps. Because you always are going to have to fuse this because I'm coming straight off the battery. So I have to fuse it in line. I can't rely on going to my fuse box. I have to fuse it myself. And so I put the, or the relay that I have has a 30 amp fuse attached to the outside of it. So that's 30 going in. When this connects, it triggers this relay, closes, and then I have 30 coming straight from the battery to the fans, the fans turn on. Now the fans will turn off when one of two things happen. The temperature goes below 175 or the ignition is turned off. When the ignition is turned off, it breaks this circuit, breaks that circuit, and of course the fans would turn off. All right, so that's a quick drawing of what's going on with the relay. The things that you have to remember is you cannot, you cannot hook the fans directly to 906. You can't do it. You have to go through a relay. The fans have to be connected directly from a battery source. And the other important thing is you must fuse them. You must, 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 absolutely must put that fuse in line. If anything happened to these fans, this wire shorts out. If that fuse will pop, if it doesn't pop, that means you're going to have potentially a fire in your engine compartment. That's not a good day. So anyways, you must fuse that there. And then of course, I've got the dual fans. Now there is a setup where you can have two uh, relays going on these two fans. One relay at 175 and maybe you want another relay and another temperature switch somewhere. Maybe set that at 190 so you could have one fan come on at one time and another fan come on at another. Right now, I'm just going to have one fan coming. All right, so let's go back to the car. Now that we know how a relay works, here, here's the relay mounted to the vehicle. So down here we have our junctioning box. This wire right here goes directly to positive on the battery. And then these two wires here, one goes directly to power the fuse panel. And this wire right here comes directly from the alternator. So when the vehicle's running, the alternator should be pushing out about 14 volts, between 13 and 14 volts. And that is the power that's gonna power the system and continue to recharge the battery. Of course, when the alternator's not on, the battery is running it, and you'll get 12 volts from the battery right here. And of course, that's how you're going to run all of your brake lights, uh, your headlights will work even if the vehicle is not on because of course we have power coming from the battery. Now, so the relay switch, we've hooked up another wire to this junctioning box. And this is this wire right here. And we saw in our demonstration, it has to be fused. So there's a 30 amp fuse right in here. And then it goes from the fuse right here to the 30 position. That's the, the pin marked 30 on the relay. And then this pin right here is 87. This is, the, this is the main power going to the fans. Of course, we don't have our radiator hooked up right now. We don't have our, uh, even our front clip on. So right now that's just an empty wire. Of course, black always goes to ground. And in this case, our ground is our switch. So mounted right here on the intake is our switch. So when this temperature switch hits, I think it's 175, it will automatically ground out, thus opening up the switch. And you saw that this power line, this is still our 906 cable. It goes right in here to 86. And then of course, 85 is ground. And that is our first relay. We will probably have two or three more relays. I chose this position on the uh, firewall 
mostly because it's gonna be protected. We're gonna have the front clip right there, and then there's a big fender well right here. So it should be pretty protected from the elements. Not that you ever drive your Corvette in the rain, right? But anyways, so it should be pretty protected right there. All right, so that was Painless Wiring Harness, episode number five. I hope you're enjoying this series. Um, the wiring harness is not easy, but um, you take it one step at a time and literally you hook up one wire at a time. And after you hook up several wires, it looks like it's almost over. So I'm still uh, have many, many wires to hook up, but like I said, it's just one wire at a time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm having a lot of fun uh, with the painless wiring harness and a lot of fun putting this into the Corvette. Hopefully we'll be driving here soon. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have a question about the painless wiring harness and my experience, please put it down below and I will answer everyone. Thanks a lot.